teacher's the favorite, right? You guys are oh, you guys are my favorite class, of course, right? It always works like that. All right, so let's take a look now. Let's take a look at. Actually, I don't want to do a reflection. Though. I want to do. I want to do the dilation for you. So let's look at number six. Here's our dilation. All right. So now we have our dilation. Ladies and gentlemen, to understand and remember the graph, first thing we need to do is we need to determine what the parent function is. So we look at our number 6 and it says 4y equals x squared. So our parent function is going to be, ooh, ooh, it's a y equals x squared. Thank you. It's a quadratic, y equals x squared. Always first, how do I what? I, I'm not doing. I'm just saying that's the parent function. I'm not. I haven't done anything yet. I just said that's the parent function. So, this is your parent function. First of all, if you guys are going to graph it, you still even have to know what the parent function looks like. The parent function crosses at one comma one, two comma four, negative two comma four. Okay, that's the parent function. You guys need to know what it. You guys need to know what it looks like and what it graphs like for this problem. I didn't ask you to graph it for your homework. Yes? That's the quadratic right? Yes. So now what they're asking us to do is describe the dilation. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we have 4y equals x squared. To describe any dilation, Dimitri, what we need to do is we need to get y by itself. So how do I get y by itself? Divide by, divide by 4 y equals, we could write x squared divided by 4, but we need to understand a dilation, remember, is the number that's multiplied by your function. Remember, dilation is when we have a number being multiplied by our function. So then what we do is we look at our notes and we say, all right, there's two cases when we had a number that was multiplied by our function. And what that was was, remember, if the number was greater than 1, right? What it did was it compressed it, made it skinnier. And when we could say when it was between 0 and 1, it expanded it horizontally. All right. So what we can do, and you might say, I don't know how to do that. Like, what do you know what to do? Ladies and gentlemen, when you first learned a graph, we learned how to do a table of values, correct? So if you want to describe the dilation, first of all, you could say that this is, um, you could say this is expanded at a factor of 4. But let's take a look at what the graph is. So you could say the dilation of this is 1 fourth. So it says, uh, describe the dilation. You could say it's going to be stretched at a factor of 4. I'm sorry, not factor 4, but a factor of 1 fourth. And what does that mean? I don't know. Let's take a look at what it's going to look like. X values. Let's just pick some easy ones. Let's do negative 2, 0, and 2. So now let's plug it in. Into my function, negative 2 squared is? Negative 2 squared is 4, positive 4, times 1 fourth is 1. 0 squared is 0, times 1 fourth is 0. 2 squared is 4, times 1 fourth is 1. So my new function. So now I just plot these points. So my new function still goes there, but when I go over to negative 2, I go to 1. And I go to over 2, I go up 1. So my new function is going to look something like this, where we could say y equals 1 fourth x squared. So when I say it's stretched at a factor of 4, you could say it's you know, horizontally you know, expanded, right? Expanded, stretched, right? Sometimes just to make sense, we say it's just fatter, right? But you guys can see how we did that graph. All right? So that's it for that problem.